Hey everybody, welcome to Bodhi Acune Wellness. Today we're talking fasting. Now, as always, before we get into action, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button. So there has been a lot of hype in the last few years on what's been called intermittent fasting. And I know in my clinic I get a ton of questions. Is it healthy? Should I be doing it? What are the drawbacks of it? So I wanted to take a few moments and break down a few different protocols on how to use fasting uh, so you can decide whether it's something you want to incorporate into your life and into your wellness regime. So uh, first off, what is fasting? Uh, so simply put, it is an energy intake protocol, basically telling you when you're going to eat and when you're not going to eat. Um, but what isn't? It isn't starvation. It isn't a weight loss pr program. And although that is a really beneficial side effect of fasting, it's actually not what it's designed for. And now fasting has been used for thousands of years around the world in many, many cultures as a self-healing modality. But let's break it down so you can understand how does that actually work. So um, we need our little clock here. So if you think about it, every time you eat a meal, your body produces a hormone called insulin, which is a storage hormone. And it takes the food you eat and breaks it down and processes it and puts a little bit of sugar in your liver and a little bit in your muscles and a little bit in your brain and converts the rest and stores it really lovely as fat. Um, and if you're eating relatively healthy, uh, your liver is going to store about 12 hours of that stored sugar, what we call glycogen, um, in that liver before it runs out. So here's where uh, we try to understand why you use fasting. So, Think if you had your last meal of the day, whatever, at 8 p.m. So 12 hours from then, at 8 a.m., your liver has run out of glycogen. And so what happens during that time is, once you eat, as I said, you spike your insulin, and then slowly over those 12 hours, the insulin slowly goes down. And as that hormone goes down, it's opposite glucagon, it's energy release hormone, and growth hormone, your building hormone, uh, both start to go up. And by 12 hours, the insulin's nice and low, and the glucagon and, and growth hormone are nice and high, and a really amazing process kicks in, which is called autophagy. And autophagy uh, is really simply cellular recycling. And so what's happening in the body at that time is that because now the body's not processing food, it's not dealing with digestion, it frees up a lot of energy to go around and scour the body. Scour the body for broken tissue, malfunctioning tissue, cancerous tissue, sick tissue, any kind of tissue that's not working properly. And basically it cuts it up, eats it, breaks it down, gets rid of it. And so whatever that tissue was, say it was your immune system, your white blood cells, um, if they had dysfunction in them, it's gonna cut those guys up. And, and what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a drop in white blood cells. Now that sounds bad, but, what happens then is when you refeed, as soon as you eat, your body has a huge production, or creates a huge production of stem cells. And stem cells are basically undifferentiated cells. So kind of think of stem cells, if you were building a website, you would, you would buy a template. And that template you could turn into any kind of website, whether it was a personal training website, whether it was an architecture website, whatever it may be, that template is gonna allow you to build any other kind of website. And that's basically what a stem cell is. It's, a, it's an undifferentiated cell that can actually be built into anything. So the body produces a whole bunch of these cells and says, okay, we got rid of a whole bunch of bad functioning white blood cells, go build a whole bunch of new ones that function properly. And so what it does is really heals disease and dysfunction in the body and increases the efficiency of every cell in the body. Now, the problem being is that most of us get up and eat breakfast. And as soon as we eat breakfast, we once again spike the insulin, drop the growth hormone, drop the uh, glucagon, um, and autophagy shuts off. So for many of us, it's actually really hard to heal. And that old thing of breakfast is the most important meal of the day, this is not based in science. This was Mr. Kellogg's telling us that. Um, has nothing to do with science at all. Um, really, it would be a way better thing for the health of your body and to heal your body is if you actually gave your body a few hours, kind of like a self-cleaning oven, to clean itself out. And for the average adult, uh, it's about 60 to 80 calories for a woman and about 80 to 100 calories uh, for a man per hour that it burns just using, just cleaning up the body. And once again, that, that, that activity takes energy, so you're actually burning calories. So 
This takes us to our first protocol. And the first protocol that I'm going to talk about is a 16-8 or sometimes adapted to an 18-6. And what that's meaning is that 16 hours of fasting, an 8-hour window for eating. So, we ate dinner at 8 o'clock. 8 a.m., we, we, we get up and at that point autophagy kicks in. And now we want to push, we've got 12 hours, and we want to push it another 4 hours till 12 o'clock to give us our 16 hours. And so that gives us 4 hours where our body is cleaning itself out, uh, healing itself, um, and burning some extra calories. Now, in a perfect world, we'd want to actually push it a little bit longer, and that's what an 18-6 is, because we studies have shown that peak autophagy, the best reaction of cellular healing, happens at uh, up to about 18 hours. So pushing to 18 hours, so maybe to 2 o'clock, which would be after a few weeks of doing this, you could do it no problem. But starting out with, with an 18-6 is a great way to start because if we look at, for the average man, burning about 80 to 100 calories just from autophagy um, in that extra six hours, that's going to give us a good 500 calories a day extra that we burn times seven days in a week, now that's 3,500 calories, and suddenly we burned an extra pound of you. And that energy had to come from somewhere to do all that, and that comes from storage, comes from fats. So that's where the weight loss kicks in. But the other aspect of it is that when now you've cut out one meal, typically you eat fewer calories. And weight loss is all about calories in and calories out. And it doesn't matter how you do it. Fasting isn't doing some magical thing to do that. It's just cutting out a meal or cutting out a time that you could eat those meals in. So you're typically going to eat a, a, a quite a bit fewer calories. However, in the long term, you want to watch calorie restriction because your uh, metabolism will slow down. But over a short term, no problem. But even if you ate the same amount of calories that you needed in a day, and there's actually a great cal um, a calorie calculator. A Mayo Clinic does a, a great calorie calculator. I'll put it down below this this video uh, so you can look at not just your what's called your BMR, your basal metabolic rate, the calorie that your body needs just to lie in bed and do nothing, which for an adult male is about 12 times their body weight, for a female is about 10 times their body weight, but that's if you laid in bed all day. Uh, but you still got to work out, you still got to work, and so typically if you look at the average male, they're looking at about a 2,000 calorie BMR, but about a 2,700 calorie uh, expenditure for the entire day. So it is a little bit different, but so the Mayo Clinic's uh, calculator is really good, I'll drop it below. Um, but the thing is that now we have 500 calories a day that we're just eating bad stuff in our body, getting rid of it, cleaning itself out, working more efficiently, and yes, definitely dropping some weight. Now it will take a bit of time to get used to this, and for most people, it's not such a big deal to push that first meal. And the thing is that we need to be eating nothing, no calories. As soon as we eat calories during that time, we're going to shut off that autophagy uh, um, process. So water, yes, definitely. And I highly encourage at least a liter, uh, if more, in that time. You can do black coffee or black tea, things without any calories. But you want to be doing juices, you don't want to be doing any kind of breakfast of any kind, and push that first meal as far as you can. So that's our first protocol, an 18-6 or 16-8. Uh, um, Either one of the two uh, are a great way to start. Now, uh, the second one I want to go into is a 24-hour fast. And this is one that is a little bit more intense, but something as a martial artist myself that I've used many, many, many times in my martial art career because it is of its amazingly powerful effect at healing injury. So in a 24-hour Fast, average male has a, almost a 2,000% increase in growth hormone, about 1,300% for females. So it's actually a huge release of growth hormone, which is our, our nice builder and healing hormone. So um, it's quite wonderful. But the trick is, and this is what, what I stipulate, I typically do this if I'm going to do this, I do it typically on a Sunday into a Monday. Why? Well, the last thing we want to do is run out of glycogen, run out of sugar when we're at work, because then we're going to feel all lightheaded and terrible. And so basically the way we do a 24 hour fast, typically I'll do it, as I said, on a Sunday and I'll have breakfast sort of 9, 10 o'clock and then I'll do lunch sort of sometime between 12 and 2 and I'll have two nice big meals like a thousand calories each. I'm getting my full at least 2,000 calories in. And then from lunchtime on Sunday, I'll fast all the way around till lunchtime on Monday and then I'll have lunch on Monday and then dinner on Monday. And then I go back to regular eating. So chronologically, there was actually a 24-hour time span when I wasn't eating.
but both days I still ate my normal amount of calories. So you didn't feel like, oh, I'm starving and I haven't like, been yet to eat all day. So you're basically just mission, missing that one meal a day. But the healing uh, ability is absolutely amazing. There's been many times uh, I had my elbow popped or I've tweaked my hip or my knee. I'll do a 24 hour fast and literally I'm 90% healed in a day. It is amazing, give, give it a try. Once again, during that 12 hour time, you wanna drink a ton of water, a ton of water. Now, once again, this stuff is not for everybody. It is not. If you have type one diabetes, this is not something for you. Um, you know, so make sure you, if you're gonna entertain any of these, yeah, you check with your doctor for, beforehand. But for the average person uh, without any undue medical concerns, yeah, this is actually a great, great uh, thing to follow. So the last protocol that we're looking at is what's called a 5-2. And so as I talked about before, um, when you're looking at weight loss, and if you're looking for, for um, uh, using fasting for weight loss, once again, it's just about energy in, energy out. And so if you decrease your calories a little bit every day, or you cut your calories just on a couple days or a certain time, it doesn't actually really matter. You still actually elicit the same caloric deficit, so you're gonna still have the same um, uh, benefits. Um, but the fasting as that added um, autophagy, cellular healing and regeneration capability to keep your body healthier and more efficient. And that actually goes a little bit extra into both weight loss and to health. So the 5-2 is really simple. Five days a week you eat your normal amount of calories, whatever that is set for you. And once again, check your calories. Uh, it's not something I recommend doing all the time. Don't get yourself crazy with calories. But it is a good thing to understand whereabouts you need. What are, whereabouts the calories you need. And there's another website called chronometer.com that I've used with patients for a long time. And it's just basically a big database that you can plug in all your food and it spits out your report of your protein, fats, and carbs, your, your, micro, your macronutrients, and then all your vitamins and minerals, your micronutrients, and of course your calories for sure. So it's a great one to use. I'll put a link for it below. Um, so on five days a week, you're gonna eat your normal amount of calories, but then two days a week spread out. So typically Monday or Thursday or Monday and Thursday, um, you're going to restrict your calories to a quarter of the calories. So for someone like myself eating 2,700 calories, I'm only gonna eat 700 calories for that meal uh, or for that day, I should say. Um, and that is gonna create, once again, that, that quite a large caloric deficit. I'm gonna get uh, that over one pound of of uh, caloric deficit, uh, which is going to mean a, a pound of body fat loss or, or a pound of weight loss every week. Now remember, when we lose body fat, it may not just be one pound that we lose. It may be a pound of body fat, but we store toxins in our fat. And so when we lose a pound of body fat, there's actually usually another associated two or three pounds of water reduction that we shed just because we don't have to dilute all that toxins and poison that we hold in our body. So yeah, we may actually lose a few pounds, but it's typically only a pound or two, and that's really all you wanna be losing a week. More than two pounds of weight loss a week is actually not healthy or sustainable. But these are three simple protocols you can do. Um, you can vary them up, you can use them from time to time. Sometimes I'll do an 18 hour fast for a few days a week. If I get injured, I'll use a 24 hour fast, or if I just wanna switch it up for one week, I'll do a 5-2 fast. Um, these are great ways to shake up your body and also allow your body to do a little bit of healing and clean itself out. Give it a try. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned a few things. As always, do me a favor. Share this video with your friends and family. Help me to help other people. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.